Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q1 FI22 results conference call of Berger Paints India Limited, hosted by MK Global Financial Services. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Ashit Desai of MK Global. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah, thanks, Janis. Good evening, everyone. Uh, we have with us uh, the management of Berger Paints today. Uh, it's a pleasure to host them for their Q1 FY22 earnings call. Uh, from the management, we have with us Mr. Srijit Dasgupta, Director of Finance and CFO, and Mr. Sujyoti Mukherjee, Vice President, Finance and Accounts. I'll now hand over the call to Srijit for his opening remarks, post which we'll begin with the Q&A. Over to you, Srijit. Thank you, Ashit. A very good afternoon to uh, all of you. Um, I'd like to extend a warm welcome to our Q1 FY22 earnings call. As usual, I'll start with a few uh, opening comments about the uh, standalone and consolidated quarterly performance, after which uh, I'll invite uh, you to ask your questions. So starting with the uh, standalone numbers for the quarter, I know it's a little bit of a, a misleading kind of uh, statistic because of the performance last year, such a low base, but for uh, 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 the uh, normal um, sort of uh, trend, uh, I'd like to still call out the uh, quarterly growth numbers. Total income from operations for the standalone operations was uh, 96%. PBDIT, including other income, was 96.4. PBT was uh, 169.2, and PAT was 171.3%. So some co comments on the standalone operations for the quarter. Uh, it was a bit of an up and down roller coaster story, as can be imagined with the second wave of the pandemic uh, taking hold in many states from the end of March and uh, affecting economic activity in the country from last week of April onwards for most places. Some states saw delayed uh, effect with cases multiplying and lockdowns being extended uh, in a somewhat delayed manner. June was relatively better compared to May. May was very badly affected partly also because of the pent-up demand due to the lockdowns in May kind of uh, unfolded in June. So that was why June was a little better. And also the lockdown effect was much less. Uh, it may be more sensible, therefore, to look at the quarterly growth numbers over the past two years, uh, as uh, obviously last year was an extremely unusual year. So we are looking at uh, somewhere between 25 to 3% uh, growth net net over the last two years, even with the uh, substantial dip last year. Lockdown imposed restrictions on business activity accepted. We do therefore see some stability in terms of demand trends. I think uh, this is a reason for some optimism. The gross margins, however, have been affected quite significantly in Q1 FY22. You may recall that I spoke about the very sharp increases in raw materials in uh, the Q4 uh, FY21 uh, earnings call uh, and the need to take price increases. Uh, the process of taking price increases is underway and some increases have been taken in May and June. However, more increases are needed, particularly in the industrial business lines, to restore parity uh, in terms of the gross margins. Uh, you may recall that the gross margins had to be read with the impact of our supply apply contracts in the last quarter of Q4. So I just uh, like to uh, recall my comments in the, um, or, or uh, revisit my comments in the last quarter 
uh, obviously there was uh, an impact of uh, the supply apply contracts in the RMC to sales ratio in Q4. Uh, the impact of that is much lower. So we did less business in Q1 of FY22 in terms of supply apply contracts. And therefore, the full effect of that uh, uh, margin uh, expansion, if you like, at the gross margin level didn't happen in Q1 of FY22. Overall, of course, in the net operating profit uh, level, it doesn't really matter because what we uh, save in terms of raw material costs, we have to probably spend a little more in terms of overheads, and that happened for us in Q4 FY22. And I'm talking of supply apply contracts. The process of uh, taking price increases uh, is, is on. We've taken price increases in May and June, and uh, we, and as well as two taken in July, and more to follow in August. These are, of course, price increases for the decorative business. Uh, as I mentioned, we will need to uh, catch up a little bit in terms of price increases for our industrial businesses. Typically, there's a lag, and we'll talk about it a little later for uh, price increases in industrial business. Uh, the main uh, takeaway, obviously, is the raw material in inflation situation. Uh, as we have mentioned in earlier earnings calls, this has also encouraged us to continue our raw material vendor development and formulation efficiency improvement activities. We spoke about it a little uh, last time we uh, met. And these are expected to continue to uh, yield reasonable dividends going forward. Obviously, not all of it happened in Q1, uh, meaning all the efforts didn't translate themselves into the uh, P&L in Q1. But going forward, we should see a slightly greater impact. In terms of sales on the decorative sales front, we saw a stronger bounce back in the Tier 1 cities as compared to the tier two and tier three towns, mainly because of the uh, faster spread of COVID this time in the smaller towns in the second wave. The project business continued into the first quarter, though uh, the associated gross margin improvement, and this was much lower because the business was much lower in Q1 as compared to the trailing quarter, uh, the margin improvement was, of course, partially offset by the uh, substantial recovery in the industrial businesses, particularly in the general industrial and automotive business lines, which have typically lower gross margins than the decorative businesses or the um, supply apply business. This of effort uh, of uh, taking price increases uh, typically lags behind that of deco business. So going forward, we need probably uh, more increases compared to deco on the industrial business line front. Coming to the consolidated numbers for the quarter, total income from operations grew by 93.2%. PVDIT, this includes other income, went up by 155.9%. PBT, after share of profit of loss of JV, went up by 482.4%. And PAT went up by a fairly large number, this is, 832.1%. Now some comments regarding uh, the consolidated results. Berger, Jensen & Nicholson, Nepal, grew significantly both in top line and profitability. Again, the comparisons are a little confusing because last year was so uh, low. Uh, they were more impacted by the pandemic in this particular quarter in the last fiscal as compared to India. So the recovery, of course, therefore, is more significant and the impact higher. Bolix Poland, that's our Polish subsidiary, had a modest top line growth, mainly because of an extended winter. I'll just uh, confirm and, and, and uh, recall the fact that uh, the consolidated results in Q1 FY22 of BPIL, that's Berger, 
incorporates the results for Bolix's Q1 results, which are January, they follow the calendar year, so it's January to March of 2021. They suffered from an extended winter. This is a low lean period in any case, and therefore sales uh, don't impact the overall consolidated numbers to that extent as compared to other quarters. But the profitability improved significantly on account of price increases taken and improved sales in the uh, UK and France geographies uh, with better contributions. Both sub coatings and STP grew top line in profitability quite impressively. Uh, sub coatings, of course, has been renamed as BSCPL. Um, so uh, that's the uh, company we are mentioning. The performance of the JVs also improved significantly in this quarter. That's the JV with uh, Nippon Paints as well as uh, the one with Becker. PAT growth jumped sharply upwards because some of the subsidiaries had suffered losses in uh, Q1 of FY21 accounting for a higher effective tax rate in the consolidated results in the same quarter in the last fiscal. These subsidiaries recovered sharply and the effective tax rate therefore dropped in this year, meaning Q1 of FY22. So that concludes my opening comments. I would now like to invite questions from the participants on the Q1 uh, FY22 results. Over to you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Avnish Roy from Edelweiss. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, congrats. Uh, my first question is on the deco paint. Uh, so last five quarters, uh, you and market uh, leader, both have done quite well, uh, better than initial expectation, faster recovery. Uh, now, when I see uh, work from home would have helped there because consumer was spending so much time at uh, home, he had time to get his house painted. Plus, he needed a uh, better environment. Second is a uh, uh, lot of reverse migration also happened. So, consumer went from big cities to smaller cities. And again, same kind of demand you would have had uh, in smaller city, which was not the case earlier. So now when vaccine, 50 crore vaccines are done, and next three, four months, uh, most of the cities, uh, middle class will be fully vaccinated. Do you see some risk of this kind of a demand driver not being there, especially base is high and the demand driver also goes away? Any comments there? Uh, thanks, Abhinesh, for the question. Um, we don't see any such uh, reason to be anxious or concerned as yet. Uh, as you can imagine, I can't talk about uh, Q2 but, um, or, or uh, the medium term uh, picture, but no reason to feel pessimistic at all. Uh, we feel that uh, trends will only uh, strengthen uh, going forward. And uh, why would that happen? Uh, any, any big reason? Because a lot of the other consumption is having uh, volatile time, plus you have a high base. Absolutely, uh, Abnish. I think I'm, uh, you would recall my mentioning in earlier uh, quarter earnings calls that we uh, set some uh, confidence in our newer products, our waterproofing initiative, the construction chemical uh, effort that we are uh, taking, uh, the slew of new uh, decorative products, uh, including some uh, luxury emulsions that we've introduced recently uh, and which are uh, growing. So I think this leads us to uh, this conclusion. So it's more about our own strategies rather than how the overall market de is developing. So my second question is on the auto JV with Nippon. Uh, so uh, auto companies are seeing a big issue of currently supply of the chips, so the car companies. Uh, 
may not be the same in every kind of a price bracket but clearly there is a worldwide global problem uh, which could remain for a few months at least so are your customers also giving this kind of a demand scenario and uh, is it impacting your auto demand also near term medium term to some extent but we are less exposed to the uh, that uh, particular segment of the four wheeler category uh, as you can imagine we are more exposed to the two wheelers three wheelers and uh, commercial vehicles three wheelers in our jv and to some extent some passenger cars of course in the jv but in the standalone company we mainly look at commercial vehicles and two wheelers so to that extent we are perhaps a little uh, insulated from that effect Okay. Okay. That's all from my side. That's very helpful. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Avnish. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Avi Mehta from Macquarie. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, hi, Shri Jyoti. Just first on this recent, uh, you know, JV change that has happened uh, from Nippon to Isaac Newton Corporation. Honest, uh, could you kind of? give us a sense on what exactly is this i am not sure what is isaac newton corporation is it an auto company that we are talking about which is it's a subsidiary of an auto company or something of that sort which i am not aware of and does this uh, entail yeah. any change in operations yeah i i believe press releases have been given by uh, the respective paint companies meaning nippon and burja so hopefully Uh, that will be a little clear but just to since you have asked this question uh, i'll i'll won't spend too much time on it because this is something that happened today itself um but uh, essentially it is a bit of restructuring of the shareholding of the uh, jv partner so in essence it remains uh, nippon paints the technology remains the same the way the shareholding is structured is through this subsidiary called isaac newton it doesn't change anything for us or for the customers the company remains to be co- remains uh, the same uh, essentially the dna is the same the technology is the same only the uh, ownership uh, in terms of structure is different the beneficial ownership again remains the same perfect sir. perfect that's clear then uh, the second bit i wanted to kind of just understand on the decorative performance uh, would you kind of like last quarter it felt that you were you know probably the fastest growing in the industry uh is that the same case in this quarter as well in the decorative side yes we think so uh absolutely right i mean uh, clearly we would have grown the fastest in decorative because uh, you'll have to discount our results a little bit for 18% of our turnover which is uh, consists of uh, industrial uh some of industrial of course has grown faster than decorative but uh, overall we'd say we would have uh, been the fastest in industry um my uh, takeaway is that the uh, industry um competitor which has shown the fastest growth rate or the highest growth rate in this quarter would it, it would have largely come because of industrial uh, growth Oh, okay okay sir uh, and sir uh, lastly i wanted to kind of just understand the input cost inflation because you kind of spent some time explaining that i just wanted yeah. to clarify one small part in the industrial side uh, could you kind of give us a sense on what is the proportion of input costs uh, that are still pending in sense that you know 50% of the inflation has been passed on and probably another 50% or for you know 60% is passed on just give us some sense on what's the journey that we are looking for yeah uh, without giving you actual numbers because that will impact the perception of future profits which we tend to avoid uh, yes a substantial portion of the industrial business line price increases would have remained to be taken uh, sitting on 30th june okay so they're still uh, is yet to be taken as on 30th june sir okay okay yes. but yes. and we've got some more increases post that right sir uh, i'm not asking for the quantum but it's a continuous process yes yes of course okay sir okay i'll come back in the queue for the question thank you very much sure sure thank you reminder to the participants if you have a question please press star then one the next question is from the line of percy pantaki from ifl please go ahead uh hi sir uh, can you give some idea about the volume value gap uh, for this quarter 
Uh, I'll just give you some indication. Uh, it would be around four, four and a half percent, but not all of it is on account of price increase. As you can imagine, the price increase impact is lower. And um, there is a, a substantial impact of uh, premiumization as well. Okay, so basically value is 4.5% higher than the volume. That's right. But not all of it on account of um, price increases is what we are saying. Understood, understood. But my understanding was that the industry has taken about uh, the almost 4% kind of uh, price increases. Uh, isn't that the case? Uh, not as much as that if you are uh, limiting yourself to the first quarter some price increases have been taken in July which will be uh, the cumulative effect will be of course around uh, close to 5% you know so second question sir on uh, margin so uh, 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 if we look at uh, uh, the latter half of FY21 Q3 Q4, the kind of margins uh, that uh, many players in the industry reported, uh, uh, are those uh, sort of exceptional margins uh, in the sense that uh, it was a combination of uh, low input prices, uh, uh, a lot of cost savings on the back of uh, COVID-related disruption, etc. And should we take stable state margins, uh, maybe better than what we are doing right now, but not as high as we saw uh, last year round? Would that be the correct uh, thought process? Probably right. I think we certainly expect margins to improve. Uh, I can't say very much more than that, because the full effect of the raw material price increases have not yet panned out. Uh, so it's still a bit of a guesswork uh, in terms of understanding what the impact will be going forward. But uh, yes, uh, there, there is, of course, uh, every effort to uh, improve margins from the current level, for sure. Right, sir. And my last question is on distribution expansion. If you could, uh, if not the absolute number you're not comfortable giving, can you at least give us the percentage growth in the number of uh, distributors and uh, the uh, tinting machines uh, uh, versus 12 months ago? Yes, uh, I'll have to restrict my comments to the quarter. Uh, I, I can't, uh, this is uh, the 12 month numbers are uh, not in the scope of this discussion. Uh, obviously the pandemic did have some effect, but uh, looking at the numbers and our budgeted numbers, we do expect uh, that the FY22 additions would be close to what we added in FY21, which is around uh, 12 to 13 percent. Sorry, I, I lost you there for a minute. You're saying uh, 12 to 13 percent addition was in Q1 of FY22, is it? No, the 12 to 13 was last year. We are on track to uh, do the same kind of uh, performance, maybe marginally better in FY22. So Q1, uh, I've stayed away from the numbers because it's a little misleading because it's, it's still early days. We got affected by the pandemic. and uh, But we are on track to uh, do the same or better numbers compared to FY21. Okay, great. That's all for me. Thanks and all the best. Thanks. Thank you. We take the next question from the line of Alok from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello, sir. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Uh, my first question uh, was, was again on the dealer addition. Uh, so while you mentioned the percentage dealer increase that we might see, just wanted to check uh, any specific uh, markets, geographies that we are seeing this, and if you can break it up between TO1 and 2 or TO3 and beyond, what where where we would be adding a uh, little higher dealers that is number one you're right uh, we don't uh, give specific uh, uh, sector or geography wise uh, breakups but you're right yes the attempt to increase our tier two or tier three uh, network would be uh, would yield uh, much better results than the metro cities that's happened in the past and will continue okay uh, and my second question is on the on the cost line in terms. So while in the previous year we have seen a lot of cost reset for most of the companies, uh, wanted to check any specific guidance or you know color that you can give in your cost line in terms 
how how sustainable the savings have been and and you know what is the road map going ahead if you can share some thoughts around it thank you uh, i think i'll i'll restrict my comments to what i've already said in the opening comments meaning that yes the efforts to improve uh, the gross margins in the form of raw material costs vendor development formula uh, formulation efficiencies that will continue unabated and um, we have already seen some uh, results of that in uh, the first quarter uh, not all of it has translated itself into the cost of goods sold but uh, we should see some impact of that going forward uh, so that's there and in terms of the other expenses and uh, uh, i think i mentioned in the last earnings call that uh, we've had to uh, we or we uh, took a conscious decision to restore our advertising costs back to normal very soon after the first quarter and uh, we have a uh, plan for substantial advertising spends this year as well so um, that uh, is is uh, something that we'll have to take into account but the uh, effect of the pandemic in terms of the other cost reductions like traveling uh, some of the uh, fixed costs in our factories some of the manpower costs uh, and and uh, logistics costs we will of course continue our uh, efforts to keep them at the uh, pandemic levels or the last year levels uh, that's that's something uh, by levels i mean of course as a percentage to sales sure got it got it and if i can just squeeze in one more uh, want to check uh, you know uh, competition has been has been sort of aggressively pushing products across waterproofing and construction chemicals uh wanted to check uh, would you be uh, you know confident in saying that you have the whole range already in place and now it's just about placement and marketing or you are still on route developing those products also no i think uh, that's a fair question um this is probably one of our faster growing segments and i i'm talking about waterproofing as a segment or a sub segment within the overall construction chemicals uh so yes i think we have all our products in place uh you will recall that we had uh, acquired the uh, 100 per, uh, 95% subsidiary which is uh, stp and we are now in a position to uh, source some of the gaps that we had in our portfolio from them uh things that we purchased from other people as uh, trading purchases but now we it's all uh, within the overall budget group and uh, therefore uh, most of the products have been uh, plugged or the gaps have been uh, filled so uh, good potential for our waterproofing products as well as the admixture uh, category in our overall construction chemical uh, portfolio got it got it and this 150% growth in stp for fy21 uh of course that would not sustain that's also because you increase the stake yes, but that has but to be some... taken in the context yes yeah yeah okay but uh, yeah that's the clarification i wanted thank you thank you sir thank you thank you the next question is from the line of shirish pradesi from centrum broking please go ahead hi shri jitan you are the uh, good evening hi sir uh, mm-hmm. wonderful uh, performance <coughs> Uh, thank you we have two questions uh, the first question is on decorative uh, i think uh, what we have found uh, i think uh, people are talking about big numbers from the exterior paint also i'm not asking a specific number uh, for this quarter but if you can split what is the split between the interior and uh, exterior for the decorative business and what was this number of two years before uh, shirish i can't help you with specific percentages but uh, to give you some color as to what we did in uh, emulsions sure. uh, exteriors uh, did better uh, and and uh, uh, our newer products including our uh, marquee pro- uh, flagship uh, brands like weather coat uh, long life and weather coat and it does did very well uh suffice to say from my side that they outperformed the average by quite a fair margin exactly that's what i'm saying because if you if you look at the digital medium or even uh, the wide range of television medium we think suddenly there's a lot of thrust on the exterior paint is that category is broadly unorganized and that's why the 
organized player are attacking that is that the trend or genuinely there is a demand cycle which is happening so I, I, what i wanted to understand sir is that what is fundamentally driving this growth a little bit i think uh, uh, one of your colleagues mentioned earlier that people are spending a little more time at home so more attention to uh, jobs like painting but uh, specifically for exteriors i think uh, it has less potential for safety related issues in a painting environment in the home so people are more comfortable getting their exterior painting done in this in these difficult times so that may be one of the answers uh the also the other fact is of course uh, interior emulsions have also done well so probably the answer to that is uh, the fact that people are spending time at home and getting things done uh, uh, and also the fact that the uh, major players have uh, really uh, spent some uh, time and uh, thought on uh, making the process safe so a uh, number of uh, uh, initiatives taken to make it safer for consumers okay okay uh, my second and last question on quarter 1 uh, what is the uh, i mean it's very difficult but if you can give me some qualitative remarks uh, what is the weighted inflation we have seen in uh, domestic uh, decorative business uh, you're talking about the inflation in cost yeah inflation in cost okay uh, so i i can only give you a little color to that i mean you, you would have seen the crude uh, oil prices yeah. in other years typically the crude oil prices largely affected the solvent based products yeah. but this year because of the global uh, capacity situation in monomer production um which is uh, also of course dependent eventually on crude oil prices but largely again uh more quick to reflect uh, global shortages in capacity uh, with um, other economies picking up and demand picking up so typically this year we've seen a cost inflation across all the uh, segments including water based uh, in in deco so as i mentioned that uh, we've only taken about 5% uh, cumulative price increases in decorative we need to go uh, much beyond that so will you uh, i mean of course quarter one is not the indicative number and now we are entering to the rain season but say suppose second half is uh, thing uh, things normalize uh, would equal amount of price increases the trade can digest i think the challenge really is the timing and the uh, understanding of the raw material uh, trends price trends so people i think are just waiting a little bit to see how things uh, level out uh that's the issue here and uh, you know instead of taking uh, uh, a sort of a, a, a one time price increase which can be a little disruptive uh, typically a more gradual approach i think is what all the companies are looking at sure thank you sir uh, and all the best to you and the team thanks thank you the next question is from the line of varun singh from idbi capital please go ahead yeah uh, uh, thank you for the opportunity uh, so uh, two questions one on uh, revenue growth sir as you mentioned that in decorative coatings we have outperformed the competition so uh, what are the you know broad uh, reasons uh, kind of that you will ascribe uh, for our this outperformance sir if you can give some uh, comment on that i think we'll have to look at uh, our newer products the health of our uh, newer brands the fact that we have done well in our uh, construction chemicals business as well as the uh, uh, project businesses that we uh, did in the in q1 it was as i mentioned earlier in earlier comments it was much lower than q4 of fy22 but still enough to be uh, reasonably significant sir apart from the new product new brands and the new categories that we have entered in the existing uh, categories where we already have strength anything uh, to call out uh, over there sir in the uh, decorative coating business regarding our out performance i think uh, any uh, special comments are necessary i think uh, overall the uh, business line has done well 
ओके आई मीन एनीथिंग ऑन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन और नथिंग यू लाइक आई मीन आई मेड सम कमेंट्स आई थिंक ऑन नेटवर्क एक्सपेंशन सो आई वोंट रिपीट माय सेल्फ श्योर सर थैंक यू एंड सर सेकंड एंड लास्ट क्वेश्चन इज ऑन ग्रॉस मार्जिन आई थिंक इवन ऑन ग्रॉस मार्जिन वी आउट परफॉर्म सो रिलेटिव कॉन्ट्रैक्शन इन द ग्रॉस मार्जिन ईयर ऑन ईयर ऑफ बर्जर कंपेयर टू अदर कंपनीज इज सिग्निफिकेंटली लोअर सर so i mean uh, what would you uh, uh, what would be the reason for uh, you know our out performance even on gross margin contraction front i think one has to look at it in terms of both the trailing quarter and the quarter last fiscal i think it's probably in these difficult times it's probably more relevant to look at the trailing quarter you'll find that we are pretty much uh, mirroring uh, other deco companies Uh, the company which has a substantial industrial presence of course the uh, numbers are slightly different i won't go into any comments on competition obviously for from in this uh, uh, conference but uh, i think largely the uh, rmc trends mirror competition uh, give or take maybe a percentage point here or there but um, you're right compared to last year uh, the um, uh, margin uh, contraction has been less Uh, mainly because we've had some uh, mix change uh, and and uh, we did mention i think in the, in that quarter that we pretty much sold what we could in q1 of f1 fy21 uh, the mix has improved uh, in q1 of fy22 uh, as well as the fact that as i mentioned there was some supply apply uh, projects in q1 fy22 which tends to depress the rmc number a little bit gross margins as you call it sure sir uh, that's helpful uh, thank you very very much and all the best thank you thank you the next question is from the line of tejas shah from spark capital please go ahead uh hi shivdeep hi shivdeep thanks for the opportunity uh uh so my first question pertains to uh, the commentaries that we are gathering from all the real estate players that almost after a break of 7 8 years they are seeing real buoyancy in primary demand so just wanted to check whether we are also seeing that kind of buoyancy and then this is not a project led businesses alone but even uh, the the secondary demand which comes from first time buyers of the home so are we seeing any such buoyancy in our numbers or our channel checks as well I'll have to limit my remarks to Q1, unfortunately, so I can't talk about current trends, meaning uh, this month or the preceding one. But in Q1, yes, we did see a little uh, indicator uh, or indication of that happening. So we are optimistic that this could be a, a year which uh, shows some kind of turnaround for the real estate industry. and what is the margin profile of this business is it more accurate margin accurate versus a normal repainting business or is it as accurate or as, as as profitable as the other business marginally lower because the brand is obviously not so important and typically these products are what promoters and builders would use and and they don't necessarily choose the best uh, so yes the margins are a little lower than the average deco business but only a little sure uh that's that's i think the second question pertains to the relative out performance in deco pins that we spoke about uh just to understand uh, should we uh, if we look at this from the lens of uh, regional uh, uh, events which played out this quarter southern india was under tremendous pressure uh, relative to and uh, southern india and maharashtra in particular were in your tremendous pressure was breaking versus, up uh, unfortunately i couldn't catch the last bit of your sentence Yes, we are not able now. Yeah, yeah, better. Yeah. Now, so I was saying that if we look at this our performance on the lens of regional events which played out during the second wave, where uh, southern India and West India were uh, relatively much more impacted, uh, is, could it be the case that the markets where we are strong were relatively much more open for business versus rest of India, and and uh, and hence uh, this quarter's our performance should be looked at from that lens? So, uh, I'm, I'm just giving a thought there. uh if you look at the pan india situation it was a bit of an up and down situation you know uh for sure uh, the east and northeast uh, maybe uh, the second wave impacted uh, these uh, states little later so that came through perhaps in the end of uh, or middle of may and a little bit of june 
whereas some of the other states that you mentioned probably recovered a little bit from the second wave and opened up a little earlier. So by and large, the, it sort of evened out. Uh, it is uh, absolutely true that uh, no matter whether you look at it state-wise or region-wise, this quarter was impacted by lockdowns for sure. So uh, uh, if, if that helps, uh, that, that's the kind of uh, comment uh, perhaps that's uh, relevant. That's very insightful. Thanks, thanks, Sujit, and all the best. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anirudha Joshi from ICC Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Hello, sir. Uh, two questions. Uh, you have indicated about the performance of waterproofing business, uh, but can you also indicate uh, about the performance of putty business in uh, Q1? And uh, second question, more of a strategic in nature. So the market leader is not... Uh, is uh, limiting uh, itself in just paints and it is entering uh, multiple segments and not just ancillary segment it has uh, beautiful ho beautiful homes etc so there are many other segments so burger uh, strong number two player we have not yet seen uh, much such investment except maybe waterproofing uh, or putty so uh, any uh, uh, means any idea about how do we uh, are going ahead in these segments or we want to remain a your uh, play on paint business? No, regarding your comments, uh, reference to parties, uh, last year was an unusual quarter because, uh, you know, everybody, I think, sold as much putty as they could, uh, ourselves included. This year, that uh, correction back to what we call normal levels has happened. So. Uh, if you compare it with uh, Q1 of FY21, our mix would be much richer uh, in this quarter because we sold less putty. So that's, that's okay. one comment. But uh, in terms of uh, the overall uh, position, of course, uh, we would like to concentrate on our construction chemical business, the admixture uh, business, um, the uh, value-added premium luxury uh, emulsions. Uh, unfortunately, or uh, for whatever reason, we have not made a foray into other home improvement uh, sectors or uh, segments, but uh, and have no immediate plans of such. But uh, we would like to uh, consolidate our position in the uh, categories that I mentioned. So premiumization, um, construction chemicals, and waterproofing. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, understood, sir. I mean, uh, just to clarify, putty, uh, whether putty revenues would have declined uh, on a buy y basis, is that a fair assumption? Uh, compared to Q1 of last year? Yes, yes. No, last year, no. June quarter? I, I'm saying the mix would have uh, declined in the overall uh, basket. Okay. Okay, sure, sir. Understood, understood. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, if you wish to ask a question, please press star then 1 on your touchstone telephone. The next question is from the line of Avi Mehta from Akwari. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, Srijit Jyoti. Just two more questions. First, sure. uh, any update on the CapEx plan is, uh, you know, how, uh, what is kind of happening on store uh, on, the, on that? And yeah, uh, uh, our uh, plant in uh, UP, uh, the construction program is on track. Uh, mm -hmm. Our schedules are being met and we are going ahead uh, as planned. So no revision there. Uh, if if okay, you were referring, course, referring to our greenfield project in UP, yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, I mean, we would kind of continue to kind of do that 800 crores plus kind of. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, the second bit was essentially on the subsidiaries. I mean, in particular, uh, if I may say, bollocks and the wood coating subsidiaries. Um, what I mean is the entire year last year uh, as well. And even in this quarter, you're pointing towards healthy profitability. If I'm correct, Bollix has almost reached double-digit, high double-digit, uh, you know, uh, 
profitability or EBITDA margin, um, is that something that is a more sustainable trajectory? Uh, and because of you know the changes in the business that we have seen, is that a fair way to look at this business now as we go forward? Uh, and similarly, uh, yeah, on the- yeah, I, I, I understand your question, Avi. Um, yeah, yeah. Couple of things. I think we should. Uh, it's not the wood coating subsidiary which is the most profitable. I mentioned uh, BGN Nepal, which is our uh, Nepal subsidiary, which uh, really uh, did very well in this quarter compared to Q1. And the other two subsidiaries are uh, Sabu Coatings and STP. STP is the construction chemicals uh, company that we acquired. And subbucate coatings is the special uh, specialized coatings or uh, uh, typically sp- uh, industrial coatings of a specialized nature. It's not uh, related to auto or uh, other such, but mainly general industrial. Those are the companies uh, or the units that did very well. But uh, talking about Bolix, I think you may recall that in my last uh, earnings call, I did say that um, we have uh, made a significant foray into the UK market and France, which is uh, good news for the ethics business that we have in Poland. These are through subsidiaries of our Polish entity. And um, lockdown and, and COVID-related disruptions apart, I think uh, UK is coming to a, a situation where m- most of the inhabitants are now uh, double vaccinated and, and uh, you know, the economy will open up uh, cautiously, of course. And uh, that means that we have our order book is pretty full currently. And uh, once the lockdown uh, restrictions are lifted, as far as construction uh, sites are concerned completely, uh, we hope to see a much better performance from Bolix going forward. Not that they're doing badly, they're doing quite well, but uh, it should uh, take another trajectory or, or uh, gradient uh, going forward. And from a long, I mean, medium term point of view, I think we've now reached the profitability that we had earlier envisaged. I'm assuming, or is there more juice in here that I'm probably missing out? Because we are almost at what? Are uh, you referring to the Polish Polic. entity? Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely right, Avi. I think a uh, point well made. Uh, it's all about scale, I think. So we've made the investment in people. We made the investment in infrastructure earlier. And uh, this is now, I think we are poised to get the dividends. Perfect, perfect. I, I, uh, and just to clarify, sir, when I was talking about the wood coatings, I didn't mean it from a profitability lens. I was trying to understand, is this, what is the kind of profitability that we can see over a medium term? I'm not asking for a you know, near-term guidance, but is this like uh, a single-digit, double-digit kind of margin business, or is this still an investment phase which you need time? Uh, it's still a small point. part of our overall business. We do most of the wood coatings from our uh, standalone company itself. The uh, JV is a, is a smaller entity. Uh, so, yes, the wood coatings margin needs to improve. Well, let's put it this way. Perfect, sir. No, I, mean, I, I, I got the, uh, I'm very clear on this. Thank you very much, sir. This is very helpful. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashit Desai from MK Global. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, Srijit and Sudhyoti. Just one question. Uh, could you uh, comment on the discounting part? We've seen an increase in discounting or competitive trade spends increase over the last one to two years. Uh, given that cost inflation has increased now and our price increases are also slower, uh, do you think there will be a moderation in this discounting uh, that we've seen over the last few quarters? Uh, we sincerely hope so, but that's something that is dependent on how competition behaves. Uh, obviously, we don't want to give up any business, and uh, sometimes it becomes uh, a fairly uh, you know, intense uh, battle uh, as far as discounting is concerned. But it affects some segments, mainly the uh, economy uh, end of the market. So, yes, and, and maybe in some enamels. Okay, so in those segments, you're saying it has moderated? Uh, no, it, it, it's uh, difficult to predict because uh, that's where the battle is intense. Okay. 
Okay. So uh, going forward, we don't know. I mean, it will depend on how competition uh, behaves and how we uh, obviously have to react. But we do hope overall that it should moderate. Uh, it was more uh, COVID-led, but again, with the newer players coming in, we have to be careful. Okay, got it. Thanks and all the best. That's it. Thanks, thanks, Ashish. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Avnish Roy from Edelweiss. Please go ahead. Yeah, sir. One question on the advertising spend. So we have seen last five years for the industry ads as a percentage of sales it went up. But FY21, uh, it has gone down. Of course, pandemic uh, quarter Q1 was hugely uh, lower. But my question is now, based on your current understanding, in the near term, medium term, is the percentage of sales for the industry not as a guidance for your company? Do you see that uh, slightly trending downwards because gross margin pressure is there? Last four or five years, anyway, it has gone up. And everyone is seeing good growth uh, in the deco anyway. So is it logical to uh, expect that? Maybe not. I don't think so, Amnish, because... Uh... You know, uh, it translates very quickly into the uh, higher sales for the projects, which, uh, for the products which are advertised. So uh, I think, uh, by and large, people would persist with higher advertising or at least media spends, if not the overall ANP spends. You think media spends will come back? As in, for the full year? Yes, yes, yes absolutely, spend. absolutely. Okay, okay, that's uh, helpful. Second question, uh, last question essentially, uh, on the real estate recovery, you are present in most uh, parts of the country and uh, we are seeing definitely good uh, signs emerging. But from the on-ground, what are you getting sense? Is this a multi-year uh, revival in terms of uh, real estate uh, launches, project launches, etc.? So any sense you can uh, share with us? These can be your thoughts. These are again, absolutely no guidance. No, no, I, I, I can only respond Amit, by saying we sincerely hope so. Uh, I, uh, we do see some of these signs, but I don't think we can really say any, anything which may be of any use to uh, uh, the participants, uh, except to say we certainly hope so. I think uh, let's look forward to that. So you're not expanding your teams? Uh, if your uh, statement seems fairly benign. You're not expanding your uh, project team? No, no, uh, I think uh, that is, uh, we, we actually invest in manpower fairly uh, uh, early on in the year in terms of our budgeted strengths. So those are continuing. Last year was a bit of an unusual year. This year we should see uh, restoration of the normal activity. So yes, uh, it will continue, the investment in manpower. Okay. Okay, that's all from my side. That was the help. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference back to the management for closing comments. Over to you all. Yeah. Thank you so much. First of all, I would like to thank all participants for your insightful questions and uh, participation. Uh, we wish uh, I mean, to see a better business environment going forward with the uh, normalization of the pandemic as well as more vaccinations. Wish all of you to stay safe and look forward to seeing you in the next quarter as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. On behalf of MK Global Financial Services, we conclude today's conference. Thank you all for joining me in our disconnect lines.